I did a degree in philosophy and religious studies, so two separate degrees, one in philosophy and one in religious studies, and um, I've just always been really interested in, in philosophy and in um, looking at stories or mythology and what is this saying, like what's the deeper meaning behind this and how can I relate that to my practice or how can I relate it to myself, my world, my existence. Um, so, I mean, you know, philosophy in, in Greek means a uh, lover of wisdom, right? And here in India, philosophy is called darshan, which is a way to see, right? And so for me, that's just like yoga. How I came to yoga was through philosophy, was through, through learning about the stories and the culture and the philosophies of India. So that's always been of interest to me. So when I started doing asanas, what really interested me about the asanas was, well, what does all this mean? What's this, you know, so something's called like, you who know, is this Bharat, yeah, Bharat Vajasana. Well, who is this Bharat Vaja? Like, what's, why does this guy get a pose named after him, yeah. right? What did he do that's so great? <laughs> yeah. um, you know, who's this Vashista? What's going on with him? Like, what did he have to say? Yeah. So I just, I just liked reading about philosophy and teachings. And I started doing more of that and kind of realizing that so many of the postures were about, um, you know, named after sages or gods. And it's all, a lot of it's tied into sort of this very, very elaborate mythology in Indian culture. But all of these different myths have deeper... Um, sort of morals or s meanings that we can gain wisdom and knowledge from and really yeah, are teaching. talking about yoga. Yeah, it's teaching us about yoga. I started just once in a while I'd do like an asana or have an asana picture of myself and then I'd post something but I mean because like I said I'm not very anatomically inclined. I don't really have much interest in learning about muscles and bones although I know something about them I don't yeah. really care to talk about them um, <laughs> I'd much rather talk about the deeper meaning behind something or you know how is this going to affect your spirit how is this going to affect your mind what can you derive from doing an asana that's going to change what's happening inside yourself internally on like a psychic spiritual mental emotional level and so that's what I started posting about, was who these, you know, various sages and rishis were, or even animals, you know, and how, why, why they got a posture named after them. Yeah. What made them so special, right? And so, yeah, that's, that was my, my main thing, and people really liked it. They really kind of connected to it. One of my favorite ones, you know, Ashtavakrasana. Ashtavakra, it means one who's bent in eight places. The story is that he was in his mother's womb and his father was chanting.